Good evening. I'm Dr. Sylvia Miles Wright. I'm the principal at W.R. James Elementary School here in Willingboro, New Jersey. I'd like to first of all thank you for joining us tonight for our first virtual back to school night. Um, we hope it will prove to be informative um, as well as inspirational and encouraging for you and your students. I often state this to parents um, when I'm meeting with them. And truly, we do thank you for entrusting us with your students. It is a responsibility that we do not take lightly. Uh, we are very devoted and committed to the educational success, the emotional success, the overall welfare of your child. A little bit about me. I lived in Willingboro for 32 years. I've been with the Willingboro Public School System. This is my 20th year. And I've been at W.R. James. This is my 10th year at W.R. James Elementary School. Actually my eighth year as principal um, after serving two years as the assistant principal. I began my career as a auditor for the Department of Education. I then worked as an accountant for Trenton Public Schools. I started my career here in Willingboro as a business education teacher before um, moving on to be an assistant principal at Willingboro High School for two years, and then two years here at James before becoming the principal. My undergraduate degree I obtained from um, the College of New Jersey back when it was called Trenton State College. I went back 10 years later and received my Master's of Art in Teaching and then 10 years later, I went back again and I obtained a master's in educational administration. In 2018, I received my terminal degree from Hampton University in Hampton, Virginia. My philosophy, my reason for doing what I do, I believe that education is the most powerful tool that we can use to change the world. Nelson Mandela said it first, but I totally agree. That's why education is so important um, in everything that we do in every aspect of our lives. And we want to instill that love of education, that love of learning in our students. And we certainly need you as parents to help us to carry that out. I want to reiterate some of the things that our superintendent and our Board of Education has shared about our virtual learning environment. And um, I agree, this is a very new platform for all of us. We're all continuing to learn. We're all continuing to improve our technological skills. Um, but as far as distance learning, a couple of things that we want to reiterate. First of all, students still need to check into homeroom on time. And the teachers will reiterate that. They need to check into their homerooms between 8.15 and 8.35 to be marked present for the day. If they're not in their Google Meet session during that period, they will be marked absent for the day. And then it will be the parent's responsibility to go into Genesis through the parent portal um, and indicate your child as tardy in the time that was that you're entering. Each session, each Google Meet session, the teacher will take attendance again. So um, if you if you mark, for instance, you mark the child present. Um, but we look at the data for that day and every teacher, every class has marked the student absent. Well, um, the student will not get credit for that. So um, I don't believe that that will happen. But just so you know, that is what we need you to do. Every student should report to class between 815 and 835. Students should sign in with their microphones off, but with their cameras on. OK, and certainly we need to speak to students. We need to hear from them but they'll, we'll have to wait until the teacher unmutes them. If the microphone is on, we also get all the background noise in the room. So it's very important that they have their mics off. We do need their cameras on so that we can see that they're engaged and they're participating. Um, we can read facial expressions just like we do in the real, real world. So if a teacher can see that the student is frowning or you know, indicating that they're not understanding, Certainly that can prompt the teacher to rephrase or ask the question or just inquire of the students. So we do need the mics off and the cameras on. Also parents, we need your help with 
first of all, keeping students focused. So if they can be in an area that doesn't have the television, um, that it's not so easy to have people walk behind them, that would be better. If they're at, at a table um, with a nice plain background, that's that's the the best the best environment for us. We need help parents with people who are walking behind the cameras, sometimes um, not appropriately dressed, sometimes um, speaking inappropriately, things that we wouldn't say in a classroom. So we have to be mindful of that. When our students are online, they are in class. So we need them to be, first of all, dressed appropriately. We're asking that you wear your uniform shirt because then we're, we're all on the same page. There's no, no question. And also, you're going to need those uniform shirts in November when we come back to school. So if you haven't gotten any, um, I think there's still some in the stores. You should grab a couple of uniform shirts. So we want them in uniform shirts on um, when they're on vi dis visual learning, distance learning. If not possible, just a plain T-shirt. Please, no T-shirts with slogans or anything that's going to cause um, additional distraction. Also, students will need... need um, some supplies while they're working at home. So, I mean, you will need pencil, paper, notebooks. Teachers will give specifics, but certainly those things are needed in the virtual environment as well as this physical environment. And all of that information is found on our website, on the district website, and you can um, take a look at that website. There's lots more information there for you. Also, there are several, several trainings on the website for parents trainings to um, instruct you how to enter Google Classroom, how to access uh, how to access a lot of the software that we're using. So please check that out if you have not already. I wanted to share with you our annual school plan. We have set three goals for ourselves um, this year. Actually, it's our school, school improvement team. Our school improvement team consists of myself, um, four teachers and a parent, and our goals were um, narrowed down and defined over the summer. And again, um, I needed to share those with you. There will be a link and access to them from my website. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to happen, but that will happen. Um, but I would like to share our three goals for you. And first of all, certainly our goal is for language arts. And our goal is that 70% of students will demonstrate typical growth in reading informational texts on the IXL assessment and the district benchmark. IXL is a software we began using somewhat last year. We used it over the summer for um, extra support for students. And we will be using that again, certainly very soon. Your students will be taking a baseline assessment. Okay, and I'll get back to that. They will be taking a baseline assessment in IXL for reading language arts and also for math. Our math goal is 70% of students will achieve typical growth in the area of numbers and operations in base 10 as measured by district ben benchmark assessments and IXL assessments. So our math goal and our reading goal, we are using baseline data from IXL and uh, mid-year we'll measure that, uh, that the growth and at the end of the year we will measure their growth as well. Let me take this opportunity to say we appreciate parents. Um, we definitely appreciate your support. But we're finding that parents are perhaps maybe supporting too much. We don't need you and we really don't want you to give students answers. OK, so teachers have seen it in the classroom. Um, we see that you're, you know, you're literally just giving the students the answers. While we understand your willingness to help, what we need to do is to uh, help them to help them to find that information within their own selves. So help we can ask them questions to help them to remember uh, questions that will trigger their memories, questions that will trigger something that the teacher said. But we do not want to simply give the students answers when they take the IXL assessments for reading and language arts and for math. It's extremely important that you don't help them, that you don't give them answers during the test. Yes, if they need help reading the directions, by all means. Um, but for parents, siblings, brothers and sisters, uncles, aunts, 
the pet dogs, anybody, to give the students answers only hurts the students, right? Because then the assessment shows that the student knows a whole lot or he, he the student is very comfortable with the material and then the actuality is that the student doesn't. So our, our, our instruction, our instruction to the students will be based on where they are. So if we're, their test scores are showing that they're very comfortable, that they're very knowledgeable, then that's less instruction we would get or less instruction in that particular area. But if those are not, if those are not facts, then that just causes um, problems. And also note, the student, the mid-year assessment and the final year assessment will be taken in school. I'm being very optimistic. Um, but those assessments will be taken once we're back in the building. So great discrepancies, it might just not look good, okay? So please resist your urge to, um, to help the students by giving them answers. Our final goal deals with student attendance. We have had, for the past couple of years, we've had um, problems with what's determined, what's called chronic absenteeism. Chronic absenteeism is when a student is absent for just two days a month. Two days a month totals about 18 days a year, which is 10% of the school year. Chronic absenteeism just disrupts the student's learning. It just, uh, the student is not in the classroom to learn, and so they simply can't learn. Overall, if a student is not learning, they're not progressing, they're not able to demonstrate proficiency on the test, which is overall makes our overall grading, scoring, standardized testing um, decrease. So it's very important that students are in school. We will, uh, so our third goal is through the, through the implementation of the school attendance systems, the number of chronically absent students will be reduced by 13. So last year we had 43 students who are chronically absent. So these are students who were absent more than 18 days for the year, more than, yeah, more than two days a month, more than 18 days a year. Um, this, the chronic absenteeism rate is something that the district, I'm sorry, that the state of New Jersey uses to, um, to analyze our school and to evaluate our school. So certainly you can help us by ensuring that your student is in school on time every day whether it's distance learning or in-person learning. And again, this um, document will be posted. You will be able to access it. Um, you can see the background information, the data that we use to um, develop these goals. Finally, um, so again, thank you for visiting us. On my next slide, you'll see teachers' names. You will be able to click on those names to join us each uh, individual classroom presentation. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you in person real soon. You can click on any teacher's name. Um, the rest of the